Hello everybody, this is Caleb again, and welcome back. We're going to now take this gear that we made in Inkscape, and we're going to cam it up in MakerCam. So I'm just going to hop over here to Chrome, where I've already got MakerCam fired up. And the first thing I'm going to do is switch it over to centimeters for me. And I'm also going to go down over to Edit, Preferences. And I'm going to change this number right here to 90 since I'm using Inkscape instead of Illustrator. Hit OK on that. Now, just to take a step back for a second, commenting on using uh, centimeters over inches in uh, MakerCam, I've been hearing a couple things that might suggest that people using GRBL and GR and the you know gerbil shield or garbel shield, however you uh, pronounce that apparently have some trouble with using uh, the metric um, settings in MakerCam. And it seems to be because of decimal-like positions. It, it, it seems to be very, try to be very, very precise, and GRBL seems to error out with that. So if you're using you know, the stock ShapeOco 2 setup or using uh, GRBL and the Arduino kind of uh, shield, then it might be beneficial for you to think about um, camming and, and catting this in imperial units so that you don't have that problem. So with that little bit of a warning, I think we're just, just going to start now and just go to file, open SVG, going to open up the SVG I saved from earlier and kind of zoom it in. All right, so unselect everything. If we look here and just select, you know, just parts of it, we can tell that all of the pieces of it have kind of been, uh, ex I guess, exploded or blown apart from each other. They're not all one, you know, shape like they were in Inkscape. So MakerCam kind of already did that for us. So that's cool. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, select this circle, which I think that I accidentally just bumped it. Or maybe not. Alright, well I guess I didn't. So go to cam, pocket operation. I'm going to name this pocket, pocket cup, just because that's going to be the cutout where the cup of, you know, where you actually place your cup in the, in the coaster. So our tool diameter is going to be uh, eighth inch bit. So in metric that's going to be 3.175 millimeters. I believe, unless I'm totally messing it up. Uh, target depth is going to be three millimeters. Now, my material that I'm working with, I measured it out to be about, you know, 6.6 .6 millimeters to 6.7 millimeters, uh, somewhere in that zone. Uh, it's actually quarter inch, technically, or advertised as quarter inch. So, you know, I, I highly recommend you measuring whatever material you're going to cut with, and so that you can get a little bit more precise. Uh, idea of how deep it is and where you want to cut it and all that kind of stuff. But for this, we're going to make the target depth three millimeters. Safety height, I think I'm going to set it to four millimeters. Uh, we're going to be cutting this right at the at zero. Uh, step down might be different for you. For me, I found that with the eighth inch cutter, uh, I have good luck with um, 1.5 millimeters step down. Uh, we're not going to bother with that. Feed rate, I want to ch change it to 1200 millimeters per minute and 700 millimeters per minute for the plunge rate. Now, you may have to do this different and you may have to, I would highly recommend you using your own, you know, thoughts and uh, experiences with your machine. Uh, because my machine is a little bit modified from a stock system. It has a DW660 as a spindle instead of a Dremel. It has NEMA 23 motors instead of NEMA 17. So it's arguably more uh, robust and rug more rugged and capable of handling a little bit more and a little bit faster um, settings. So if you're brand new to this and you're trying to like, oh, well, I don't have any experience, I'd be conservative. You know, I... I don't know how to, you know, where to even uh, tell you to start, but I would definitely say that, you know, maybe a thousand millimeters a minute wouldn't be a bad place to start. But on the, on that same token, 
I don't have the experience with a Dremel and with NEMA 17 motors, uh, like within the stock shape OCO2 um, configuration. So, you know, that might be something you might want to talk on the forums about or ask that kind of stuff and say, hey, you know, what kind of feed rate should I be running on this machine for wood? Uh, but at the end of the day, the worst that you're going to do is it's going to miss some steps or you're going to burn up a bit. And, you know, that's a very cheap cost for learning. Uh, and that's basically the way I've had to learn. So just a warning, I guess. So don't blame me when you, when you can't run it at those speeds. You've been warned. All right, so after that's done, we're going to unselect it. And we're going to select this inner support member that's going to be cut all the way through. Go to cam, pocket operation. I'm going to change this one to gear one. I'm going to go basically gear one, gear two, gear three, gear four, and gear five. I have no idea why. That's It just works. So you can name it whatever you want. One, two, five. Target depth for this one's going to be, in my case, 6.7 millimeters that will cut all the way through on my stock this is still going to be four millimeters above the material now the stock surface for this cut since we've already cut as you can see where that's within this outer circle area we've already cut down three millimeters so we're going to change this to negative three so it's going to start cutting at negative three millimeters instead of trying to cut right at zero. Uh, if you tried to do it at zero, it would just be sitting there cutting in the air for quite a few passes, for two passes in my case. So we definitely don't want to do that. It would be a lot of time wasted, wear and tear on the machine. It would just be a stupid thing to do. And that's why that setting's there. And we need to change this, in my case, to 1,200 Okay, and basically these are all going to be the same. The reason I'm doing these all separate, see I could technically select all of these like this and then go in and do them, but you're possibly going to have some efficiency problems where it would cut one layer of this one and then it would go over here, cut this layer, cut this layer. Doing them all individually will basically make it cut everything down to its target depth and then move over to the next one and that will ultimately be more efficient and work better so cam pocket so, gear 2 3.175 target depth of 6.7 4 negative three now make sure you do a negative here if you don't have a negative three if you just have a positive three or just the number three it'll end up starting from three uh, millimeters above the stock surface so it'll it'll do even more air cutting and we're going to do this again and this is when you start wish wishing that um, maker cam had a uh, a tool library in it that you could you know set up your tools so that you could just pick it and say yeah these are the settings I want for each of these because it's the same tool but it doesn't gear three and I know these aren't technically gears they're more of the cutouts but I started with that and I'm going to stay with that just to be consistent. All right, so that's that. Pocket operation again. Gear three, or no, gear four. Okay. 6.7. So 
So basically, yeah, you just kind of got to go through here and do it like this. It It's really a pain to do it, but it'll end up with a much better result than if you were to try to select them all and do the operation all at once. I suppose if you just wanted to do it, you know, one time and just to play with it, and you wanted to do it very quickly, you could, and it'd be rough and ready, and it would work, and I think it would probably end up pretty nice, but... You know, it's one of those things, you know, if you want to do it a lot or if you don't want to take a ton of time on the cutting end, uh, it helps to spend a little bit of time here, you know, just doing this for H1. And now I'm unfortunately making horrible mistakes all of a sudden because I'm trying to talk and input data at the same time very I'm not very good at doing multitasking all right it looks right so hopefully it is all right so we got those all done now we're gonna select this outside gear shape and do cam profile we're doing outside profile we're going to 3.175 target depth of 6.7 safety height of 4 we're gonna start at 0 obviously 12, 7, uh, I think we're going to call this gear out, outside, there we go, and we want this to be obviously an outside cut, not an inside cut, and I, that looks good to me, so there we are, it's all done. Now that we got this all done, I think the next thing is to save the SVG. Uh, Basically what that's going to do it's going to save all these tool paths that we've just spent all this time inputting And it allows us to then go into there and edit them later if we need to call this file back up So I think I'm going to call it I kind of have a, a Thing of basically whatever the name of the SVG plus Cam and that's that's how I name it and so what we'll be able to do is if we need to alter any of the g-code that we um, export for later you know you can technically hand edit g-code but it's not something that i would recommend uh, to a beginner uh, in, especially on a, a project like this that's going to be fairly complicated you know it's not the most complicated i'd i'd say but it's still it's more complicated than cutting a rectangle or something like that so Basically, if we make a horrible mistake, or we made a toolpath that we missed, uh, you know, a minus sign or something like that, or screwed up something horrible on just one operation, we don't have to just scrap all that work we did. We can just go back, open up the SVG that we just saved, and we'll have all these toolpaths. We can click on it, you know, change it, and then re uh, recalculate all of the paths, and then export a new G code, you know file so that we can uh, actually have it fixed and we have a lot less time there uh, invested in repairing a mistake so with that I think we're gonna go to cam and s calculate all and that will take a second to just run through all of the different um, tool paths that we have to do and we can see that they all pop up just fine they look good Everything looks nasty all right, now that everything's calculated, I'm going to select this outside gear again, and I'm going to go to Cam, Add Tab to Selection, and I'm going to change this to 7 millimeters, 7 millimeters, or 0.7 centimeters. Yeah, that, I think that'll be good. Apparently, we have to... I, I didn't know this until I actually watched another YouTuber... Um, mention it but basically these tabs actually in MakerCam uh, don't take into account the diameter of the bit so you have to kind of measure that in there so in our case we're running you know 3.175 millimeter bit so we have to take that into account you know otherwise it's going to be much smaller and I had noticed previously that I had had some uh, tabs that just totally cut through and they were they were non-existent and I think that that possibly was the case. So we're going to try that this time. So once those tabs are in place and you're happy with them, 
we're going to go to CAM and export G-code. We can see that the profile cut is on the bottom. Just to make sure we can hit the profile last tool or um, button and that will make sure that it's there. And we want to then click the all button and that will select all of them. And then we're going to we also want to make sure that the cup operation is first and not any of the other gear things because of the fact that they rely on that being cut out for them not having to plunge through three millimeters or uh, four and a half millimeters of material the first time. So make sure that that's uh, lined up just like that. Once they're all selected and they're all in blue basically, uh, you hit export G code or export selected tool paths. We're going to name this just gear coaster. Hit save. You can exit out of that. So now why don't we uh, hop over to Linux CNC on my VMware and just fire it up and see what it looks like. Make sure it looks good before we actually throw it onto the machine. Alright, so we're going to copy the file over here. Fire up the simulation. We're going to unlock it and home all. We're going to open to desktop, change this to all files, gear coaster, clear out these, make this a little larger, and as we can see, looks good. You can see on the top here we have this uh, top area being cut out, and then underneath them we have two paths for each one of the cutouts that are totally cut out. We run it. Yep. Yep, we're running to it just fine. I guess we can speed it up to max since it's just simulation. And there it is. It's going good. So hopefully that was interesting and hopefully you kind of got your the grasp of it. If you have any questions, um, ask them in the comments below. I'll be sure to try to help you at least. Don't forget to like the video below if you enjoyed it or it was helpful in any way. And thanks for watching. Bye.